welcome back to my channel. It's Rena from the Falco family and I am done with teaching summer camp, you guys. It was five weeks. It was so hard but so good and I thought I would just kind of vlog today to just tell you a little bit about how summer camp was. I don't know, just to say hello, you guys. Yeah, just to say hello. So here's the backstory for summer camp. You guys know that I school year round. We basically just do one week off every month. It's been working super well for us. So we had all intention of continuing on through the summer um, the same way. We adapt a slightly different schedule in that we kind of spread things out a bit to make some room for, you know, those summer days and all the summer fun you have. Just kind of like a slightly slower pace, but still working through the year so that was the plan and um i was serving at church um, i serve in the nursery at church with the little babies um i was serving in church one sunday right before the summer started and i went to walk one of the babies down the hallway and as soon as i got in the hallway um my girl from church who is the head of summer camp uh stopped me and i knew right then like <laughs> i knew it i knew right then that something was up and she said that she had a position she needed to fill for a teacher um for summer camp that was starting in just a couple of weeks i'd like to say it was a huge surprise but it really wasn't i mean my main goal for us as a family is to have plans and um, work towards those plans but to always be available for whatever God needs me to do and whatever he needs me to fill so it was so like him to totally mash up my whole entire plan for this summer and um, send this job along. Um, the cool thing about it is there were so many blessings in it for me. So, but what was really nice is because I was working there, um, the kids got to all go for free. We did a field trip every week. Um, we had our math enrichment time, our reading enrichment time. We did STEAM, a little arts and crafts. So it was a full schedule. I was really nervous because in my mind I had all these things that I needed to do to get ready um, for, you know, just transitioning into the next school year. Um, even though we school year round, we still move over from one grade level to the next, transition our curriculums, update our goals or whatever else, our resources. And um, I just thought I was going to have so much time to do that throughout the summer. But with summer camp coming up, yeah. Not so much, um, but it was really, really good for me. Um, the very first thing that I learned from camp is, you guys, your girl had to learn how to get up early, okay? It's just something I've been struggling with for the longest, okay? But I had to learn how to be up and out of the house with all three kids in the morning. I was actually really nervous about it, but it was so good for me. It was definitely something that I am going to continue. Now, not this week, because this week is my week off, so I slept in. But next week, I think I'll be nice and ready to get back into that flow of being up in the morning with the kids dressed, lunch is made, and out of the house. And I think I'm gonna continue that. So whether we're out of the house heading into the library or running an errand, I don't know, going for a walk, I just wanna continue doing that. The next thing that I really enjoyed was coworkers. It was really nice to get up in the morning and get those texts that said, hey everybody, you know, see you in a little bit. Don't forget this, don't forget that. And to have that adult interaction throughout the day, oh, that was so, so nice. Another thing that I really learned and was able to practice is how to go with the flow. Um, it's something that I taught the kids in the classes because every day the schedules were changing or we were having to adjust to whatever was going on. And it's something I'm not so great at and not letting it like destroy your whole mood. It was definitely something I was able to practice over those five weeks. And I can continue to do that and feel like I have a fresh new perspective on just kind of going with the flow. Cause you, you need that in homeschool because you have a certain plan, something comes up, a car needs to be fixed. And that would throw me completely off. But 
the more you practice the patience and the perseverance and all that other stuff, the better it becomes. And so I think that this was good practice for me. Another thing that was so nice is that one of the things that I went into kind of nervous about um, is I knew that all of the other people that were there came from classroom settings and public school systems. Um, and I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to fit in because I have a very way of, I have a very different way of thinking about things when it comes to kids and their brains and stretching their brains and using their imagination and creativity, you know, that type of thing. I just kind of have out of the box thinking. When I first got there, we had to try and assess the kids. And most people would assess using pen and paper, that type of deal. And most people would go along and work in workbooks, that type of deal. But you guys know, I'm not a workbook type of girl. When I was given the workbooks, I was a little flabbergasted. Like, what am I supposed to do with these? Um, and instead of just kind of fitting myself into the mold, I, I'm really proud of myself. Um, I knew that for me, uh, reading comprehension wasn't just about filling out the worksheet so I set up a little library even though I used a lot of picture books but you guys know I'm a fan of picture books at whatever age so I guess the short of it is that I was really able to infuse those five weeks with just being myself and bringing what I bring to the table but I got a little a lot of really great feedback from both the kids and the staff and that was really nice I don't take compliments too well, um, which is, I guess, kind of humble, but in the same, on the same note, it's, I, I don't celebrate enough. I think that's what I've learned. So it was nice to hear all the good things from different people about the way that I do things. Um, and I tried to just kind of like let that soak in. It was really nice. It made me feel like I've been doing something right in homeschool. And then around the third week, I learned that myself and the teacher for STEAM, our science teacher at camp, we were going to be working together to pilot the first um, science fair. And we had to complete all of that um, on top of our regular work with the kids. You guys, it was so good. It was so good it was so I'm smiling right now but I was really stressed in the moment <laughs> but the Lord helped me through I trusted him and I said you know what Lord just I need you to show up here my steam teacher he really was the brains behind it all he gathered all the ideas or different possibilities for the kids um, to work on together and then we just started um, trying to narrow it down and setting them up into groups. We had five groups of four students. I created uh, printouts that hopefully I can share because you know how perfect this is. Um, one of the things that I felt like I was missing in homeschool was that um, student interaction as far as projects were concerned. So this was so perfect because Cameron, my oldest who was in my class, had an opportunity to participate in his very first ever science fair. Like how cool is God? Like how cool is he? Okay. Um, so we had an actual science teacher and an actual science fair setting. And I guess my goal was just to create a platform that they could just really get excited and thrive. And it was so much fun. I was nervous. It was a lot of work, but it was so much fun. Um, so I kind of just created some graphics, um, some like top secret level badges, just some fun stuff to add an element of excitement to the science fair. Um, I helped them work on their presentation boards. We had a packet to help them work their way through hypothesis and um, testing and procedures and materials and um, data collection and results and their speeches. So on the last three weeks on top of all the other camp stuff, that's what we were working on. I bought everything that I could from my house um, to set the scene. I pulled stuff from different places of the church. So 
Sorry, Pastor. Because <laughs> you know that's how I do things. I pulled like plants from different parts of the church. We got judges. It was so exciting. We had four judges that came in. I created a little space for them. The Our science teacher, who was my partner for the science fair, he asked them to dress up, which was perfect. So they actually dressed up. They had on their badges. Um, they lined up nicely. I mean, it... Oh, it melted my heart how excited they were and then afterwards we put their um the results in a little envelope and we created um certificates for them and i just used that same graphic that i used for like their badges and their entry um things their entry forms to create like a certificate for them so it looks so cute actually let me show you guys so this was the form that i created for them for their science fair these are all my kitties and this was just a list of the groups and the participants this was the packet that they actually received at the beginning um, so that they could complete their scientific method. This was their hypothesis, their question, hypothesis, materials, procedures, um, space for observation and data, charts and pictures. Then this was for laying out their design ideas for their presentation boards and any of their research and sources, new vocabulary and what they're still curious about. This was my sheet for the judges. We broke it down into three categories, research and results, creativity, originality, presentation and clarity. This was a little uh, graphic that I pulled up. They had to scan to enter the room. How cute is that? Even though the thumb is way too big. <laughs> and these were my badges to give them level 10 top secret clearance. And then I used these to make a welcome banner and a science fair banner. It was so cute. In the very beginning, I rolled out um, paper for them to begin brainstorming and I encouraged them to just kind of write down all their ideas, even if they were like squiggly lines or silly sketches of just random things. Um, I just thought it was important for them to learn that, you know, to get the things out of their mind and get all of their ideas out on paper. So as we worked on it over the three weeks, they were able to just kind of write down all of their thoughts. Something really, really cool happened, which I thought was amazing. So one group we had was our chromatography group. They used markers and different substances to see um, how the colors would separate. Um, in the beginning, they wanted to use candy, and that was what they were going to use as part of their materials for their experiment. And they realized that candy wasn't yielding um, much as far as colors, much other than the base color that the candy was. Um, but as they were brainstorming, they were using markers to write down all of their ideas and things, and they accidentally spilled something onto the paper that they had written, their brainstorming paper that they had written things on. And when they spilled the substance, I can't remember what it was, if it was just water or what but when they spilt it on the paper then the marker the marks from the marker started to separate in color and that's when they decided to use marker instead it was actually really really cool so um at the end for the uh, for the science fair i created a space on one of the walls in our room and put above it brainstorm and i hung all of their brainstorming papers it ended up so cool i was so excited about that part um so that the judges could see like where they began where they started and some of their thought process and how it would veer off and go in a completely different direction and then how they would write down cool findings and stuff it was just really nice to see they wrote parts of their speeches and things it was just really really cool to see so we had all of that space where i put brainstorm then i started printing out pictures of the kids this is when we went on our field trip this was when we worked on their chromatography. One of the groups was the anatomy of the heart and we actually went to a museum and saw a giant heart model. It was just so much fun and I had all these pictures that I um, took over the weeks and I printed them out and used them as decoration during our science fair.
heart, the artery. We wanted to talk about the different way how the heart works. So what did you learn? What's the takeaway? So I'm actually trying to get my life together right now. So my school room, well actually it looks much better. I've cleaned out a lot of things. I'm gonna show you guys all that in another video, but I finally made my piles for curriculum and I'll do a few curriculum videos for you guys so I can lay out um, the different grade levels. Over here is my kindergartner's curriculum, second grader, and then this is some of my um, fourth graders curriculum and then these I decided to separate them so I did my base curriculum here basically language arts and math and then over here is our read aloud separated by um, by grade level and then Bible curriculum and this is our dinosaur unit history curriculum geography curriculum so that was basically how I plan on setting it up for you guys. So I'm working on it. I'm getting there, you guys. So this was the actual packet that they had um, that I gave to each of the judges to give background information on our science fair. Then also inside of that packet was their judging sheet. Cameron actually won second place. His group was the Science of Flight. And then he got this award. So this was his Science Achievement Award. And if you guys are interested, um, I mean, I drew all of this stuff up into a little packet and printed it out. Um, I like to do this type of stuff in my homeschool. I don't know if you'd be interested in doing like a little science fair in your homeschool, but I can definitely make it available for you to use just to kind of spice up, spice it up and make it fun for them. But yeah, so this was my baby's achievement award certificate and then I signed it and my STEAM teacher signed it as well to make it official. I actually um, pinned this idea on my Pinterest board um, because I wanted to do a science fair before this even came along. Um, so I just recreated it and used the colors that I needed. Um, I recreated it in pages on my Apple computer. Um, but that is where I got the general idea and then I just kind of ran with it and put it on a lanyard and that is what they wore to gain access into the science fair. It was really cool, you guys. This is my baby. <laughs> I wanted him to tell you a little bit about the science fair. How did you like it, buddy? Uh, I liked it a lot. It was fun. Did you like working with the other kids? Uh-huh. So there's his certificate. <laughs> and he wore a black button-up and a bow tie. He wore a checkered blue and white bow tie and black pants. It was really cool. And it just so happened that one of the other participants from the other team had on a shirt that was blue and white checkered like his bow tie, so they took a picture to that together. Jordan. Yeah, it Jordan. Jordan. It was really cool. Thank you for being a part of our science fair and doing such a great job. You're welcome. All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, so he enjoyed camp. Overall, it was so amazing. It was, it was hard for me. It was a challenge. It was a lot of work. I had to get up early, but it was so good. And I feel like everything that God leads us to do um, is for our good, even if it is challenging and hard and difficult to get through. Because you guys, I was so ready to be back to my regular homeschool life, okay? <laughs> and I felt some type of way because um, 
I didn't want to have to rush into getting ready for homeschool, our new homeschool year. And um, by the time we finished with camp, I definitely felt like I was tempted to feel rushed. Yeah, but then I thought, you know what? Everything is great, okay? And to be honest with you, if I had all summer to really kind of go over what I wanted to do with the kids for this new year, I probably would have completely overthought it. So this time around, I didn't have as much time to really you know rethink everything so I just made good decisions or what I what I believe are good decisions um, and we're running with it thank you for listening to me chit chat about my science fair and our summer camp experience <laughs> anyway if you like this video please give it a thumbs up make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more from us talk to me in the comments below you guys and I will see you in the next video